Arc Supreme is a brand new overhaul mod with lots of new creatures and challenges I will have to beat. The mod will make me go back to the old days so flying is a thing from the past. Yes, you heard me right. In Supreme there is no way of acquiring any flyers at all so you will have to rely on your gut instinct. Supreme also has a penalty system so whenever you die you lose all of your current experience. But don't worry, it is retrievable. This mod consists of 9 different tiers with each of them having their own bosses I will have to defeat. I will also have to defeat some world bosses like Lord of the Snow and Lady of the Beach and then for the final boss, a very big monkey. To make it a bit more challenging for myself, I will have a few goals in mind I have to follow or I will fail this challenge. So before day 25, I will have to put down the boss altar and defeat my first boss, which is the baby tier known as Delta. Then before day 50, I will have to beat the apex boss for unlocking the tech grams. And before day 90, I will have to defeat my first world boss. On the final day, I will have to fight Wukong the destroyer, and I must be ready for when that happens. I will be doing this challenge on this beautiful map known as Svartalfheim, which is made by the creator of Fyodor and Valgero, which is Neketus, the man, the myth, the legend. Also this awesome mod is made by Woobly, a content creator like myself, so shout out to him for this mod, because it's incredibly fun and gives you a new different perspective of Ark. But enough has been said, I just ask that you my friends sit back and relax and enjoy the show and maybe subscribe, it's free. So once again, I woke up on the beach on this beautiful map known as Svartalfheim. So I started to gather the necessities for a pick and I went to town. Then I looked over and learned some engrams and I almost got killed because of that. So you gotta be careful in this kind of mod, everything is aggressive. No. Since I didn't get killed the first few seconds, I decided to make some armor, spare and a campfire because this boy was gonna be hungry eventually. I named my tribe What is Sleep since I barely slept enough making this video. <laughs> For people who doesn't know, but you can get a lot of rare flowers from this map which I will eventually need a lot for in this entire mod. A bit later I found two mo shops I could easily tame to get some berries and rare flowers but then a compi seemed interested in me so I had to kill it for its meters. I then started taming both of the mo shops and I eventually made myself a bed and a settler's table which is from the CKF mod so I could start on making my temporary base. Then I placed down the foundations, I made bed down but my character was starting to get a bit hungry so I had to start cooking up some meat. I went out for a bit of exploration and I noticed there is a few bee rocks here, there you can just smack for some honey apparently. I would eventually have to kill my first delta creatures for its resources so I made myself a bow and arrows. Then I found these high rich metal nodes so I went over and grabbed some metal. You get a lot of metal including pure gold ore which is the map only resource, I didn't fully explore it sadly. I then hit level 20 and I wanted to work on getting a smithy and better tools, but I didn't have a forge yet since I was lacking on the hide. On the mod you have to kill a specific creature for its resource and I didn't see too many vanilla creatures around so it was hard finding hide. Then I finally tamed the mo shops and I picked her up. I decided not to name too many dinos in this series because you can literally lose your new tame in an instant if you do. After a bit of searching I spotted a mo shop I could kill for some hide so I could start making a forge. I shot a lot of arrows but he still wouldn't die and then in the middle of it a delta bee started attacking me. And once you kill this bee you get a summoner for your own bee that is necessary for you to make the supreme kibble. Then a dodo killed me and I had no time to run away from it. Oh my god. I spawned back in and I made a bola. There's one thing to notice, you cannot bola or net gun any of Ark Supreme's dinos, sadly. Then I got back to the beach and I found the mo shops, but I was being chased by Pega Mastax, so I ran into the dodo and I got killed by being too close to it. Second try to recover my bodies, I ran back and I got ambushed by Skeleton Jerboa, like, come Ooh. on. No, are you serious? Oh my god. On my third try of recovering my body, 
I aggroed all of the dinos. So this didn't really work out. I need a new tactic. So I try to go for this new tactic. So if I gather enough stuff for a bow again to lure the dinos away, I could possibly get my stuff back. Then I got attacked by B once die. again. Then a dealer from nowhere. Like he came up on me and killed me. Oh, what the f is this? I'm in for fun. I spawned in once again, and this time I got my stuff back. But when you die, a green orb drops that you can retrieve to get your XP back. When I got back to the beach, I started blasting the dillos with arrows to get their attention away from my body. I like that the Apex still just one shot that Delta track. Like, Jesus Christ. I somehow got my stuff back with my Mo shot, so I headed back to base. Back at base, I used this bee summoner I got from earlier, and it gives me a tamed bee, which is mandatory for you to progress in the mod. Then, it was a new day, and I was out looking for more vanilla dinos to kill for some hide. And then I suddenly broke my legs from the cold. Great. A carner saw this opportunity and went for the kill. How wonderful. For some odd reason, the dino Sometimes had issues consuming the corpse and basically camped my body like the dodo did. Off. So I had to bait it over the cliff. Guess we are. I got my body back and then I made myself a forge. I wanted to make a few trank arrows, but I had to get some more narco bears, so I took the moshops out to no, farm no, some. No, no. Then I got ambushed by a tech That's raptor who one shot my moshops and did 76k oh damage to me. Like, wow. That moshops didn't last for too long. So, you see the reason why I don't name them? Okay, I'm so annoyed. I had to get my body back, okay, here, but the brother. raptor was in the way, so I had I to jump off the here. cliff again and die. Me. Boom, dead. I spawned in again, I picked up my bed and placed it down to reset the cooldown, and then I went over and grabbed my body. I then proceeded to make a smithy, I placed it down and I finally made a metal pick. Since I had the proper tool, I went over and farmed some metal and some crystal actually, so I could make a spyglass. A bit later, I managed to find some more normal dinos I could kill for some hide. I was really happy. I saw that most of my meat were about to spoil, so I split it, cause I was gonna need narcotics eventually. Then I ran into one of these Sumi rock no, columns. No, no, I panicked no. and I tried my best to run away from it. Oh no, jeez. No, no. Great success! Awesome. Then back at base, I made a supreme cauldron, which acts as a mortar, but with its own recipes within it. Then I made a bunch of narcotics in the cauldron, and I noticed the cauldron is very fast at making it. Then I started to make myself some few delta trank arrows and then a spyglass to see the torpor of all the dinos in the world. I found a delta dodo and I knocked it out with one arrow, then I proceeded to kill it and harvest it for its hide and blood. And when you kill it, you do get the crystal from the respective dino type. I then swam out into the beautiful blue sea to quickly grab some oil. This was the only spot where I knew where to get the oil. Then I got back to base, and I made myself a supreme bench because this and the cauldron will be the very two most crucial things I will need in order to start making the supreme kibble. I started making some delta essence since I'm gonna need it in order to make the delta rare flowers. It was a new day, and I found myself a delta parasaur that I could passively tame with the flowers, but I and the parasaur got killed by the very same dilo from before. Yes. I tried a few that times to get my stuff back from my body, but if you die wow. with lots of stuff on you, it will be really hard to recover it okay. again. Okay. Oh, here comes the rock all then. But are you serious? I was quite frustrated and I wanted to get myself a supreme bed, but I had to take out some deltas in order to make it. I came across a decent level parasaur and fed it some delta flowers and tamed it. I was not gonna risk of naming it in case we were gonna get one shot again. Then I came back to the base and I made myself a supreme bed. This bed has no cooldown whatsoever. I then made a couple of delta flowers in order to craft the beehive from the bees inventory and I did the same to the alpha as well. 
The beehives were ready, so I picked them up from the bees and I placed them down. These beehives can make supreme honey very, very fast. Since we had no access to flyers, I had to make myself a grappling hook to use along with the parachutes. Then, the next day, I made myself an upgrade station so we could upgrade some of our tools and weapons eventually. Just one quick thing though, all of the saddles in this mod are hard capped and they cannot be upgraded. Then I made myself a few new pieces of belt armor that could help circumvent all of these steps I've had so far. I then made the Supreme Forge, which is about 10 times faster than a normal forge. It will also craft the new Supreme ingots that will be necessary later on. I then made a couple of spike walls to prevent wild diners from entering my temp base. And friends, the time had finally come to make my first delta cable of this mod. I just want to quickly explain how this works to you guys. If you have ever played Primal Fear at one point, you will start to notice the similarities here, but it's slightly different, which I will show here for new and old players. So in order to tame any of the new dinos, you will have to make the cable for each individual tier, which means Delta Dinos will need a Delta Cable, Alpha for Alpha Cable, Apex for Apex Cable. To make these cable types, they require you to kill the dino for its blood and crystal, so you can make the cable. The crystals are grinded down in the Supreme Smithy to Essence, which you need to make the tiered flowers, which will turn into honey in their respective beehive. The honey is used in the recipes for the cable along with the essence, with some berries and fiber. And a bit further into the tier, some cable requires something called bone meals, which you can get from skeleton dinos around the map. A bit later I went out in search for a good tame, and I heard some music next to my base. It was one of the world bosses, Lady of the Beach, it had over 1 billion HP, which is just an insane number. I then spotted a resource gacha which is necessary to get your first supreme ingots since they produce a special kind of ore that's only accessible through them or a resource golem. I split the stone, dropped it all and let the gacha eat it slow and steady. There was also a delta raptor nearby so I had to be on the watch. The raptor then came for me so I knocked it out with one arrow, gave it the cable and just waited. I tamed them both and picked them up. However, the gacha did in fact produce the copper ore, which is a very important ore to make my first delta ingots. Back at base, I made myself a supreme gacha collector that can collect all of the crystals for me, so I didn't have to do it myself. Just remember to turn on the settings. I then made myself one of these supreme wraps, which is way easier to control than a normal one. Then I went over to the island where I can harvest a bunch of boxes for some easy metal ingots paste and polymer. That should give me enough resources to make my first soul gun so I didn't have to pick up the dino single handedly anymore. Then a bit later I actually went over to this lake and I found some clams which can be picked up for some silica pearls apparently. Back at base I made myself an S plus fabricator so I could make myself some electronics for an awesome teleporter at some point. Then I found this delta bulb dog on a cliff which is amazing for traveling so I started feeding it so I could have it. I then finally made an awesome teleporter so I could recover my belongings more easily because it's been extremely frustrating recovering stuff from my body. I then tamed the bulb dog and I named it Chomper. Chomp Chomp. I opened a few gacha crystals and I got some copper ore which I need for some delta ingots. So this allowed me to make my first delta pick, which has no durability and allows me to gather a lot more resources now. But I wanted a mining drill so I could farm everything so much easier, so I took Shamper for a walk to the Magmasaur cave. I found some obsidian and wanted to gather it, but we got sneaked up by a prime death worm. Like bruh, come on. I literally just tamed that bulldog. Then I went out and searched for a new bulldog. I found one, so I started feeding it, and I knocked out a few dinos around it to kill afterwards. I tamed the bulldog, and I started chomping on the sleepy dinos. I didn't notice until now, but the bulldog does some sick jumps, 
which was impressive. So, second try of going down to the Magnus Ore Cave to get some black pearls for a mining drill. I was hoping no supreme creatures wouldn't spawn in there, but they did. Oh, I'm dead. I didn't even make it. I've lost so many Delta Tames already, so I had to make more Delta Kibble and think about moving location, honestly. So I went out searching for bold dogs. I found two and I tamed them both. Then I took one of my new bold dogs out to my new permanent base location, which was on a floating island. Oh my god! I went over to my old base to grab all of the structures and place them down in my new base spot. I placed down everything temporarily until I had more stuff to play around with. I had enough of these bulldogs and I wanted to get some proper tames now. So I took one of the bulldogs out and I went searching for a good carnivore. I found a high level Delta Allosaurus but it started attacking me so I tried avoiding it as best as I could. I got caught by a primant and I lost my bolt dog again. Oh boy, oh no. these bolt dogs are so weak. Since I saw a nice looking aloe, I started preparing a bunch of gates to trap it in so I could tame it. I then also made one of these taming potions that you can feed to the dino which will remove a good portion of their food. I had to struggle with thylus ants and terror birds in the redwoods and it was an absolute show. I've never been so frustrated in my life. Having no flyers really didn't make it easier, that's for sure. The trap really didn't work out, so I just tried blasting it with arrows and hoping it would fall asleep. I honestly didn't realize it, but a sneaky pagan Mastex just took my awesome teleporter seconds right before I died by a Thyla. Oh no! Oh, took me an awesome teleporter! I couldn't make a new teleporter oh since God, we neither had no. electronics or silica pearls. So I had to jump down to the lake to grab some. I managed to make a new teleporter and I went to my last known location only to be stolen of another awesome of teleporter. This Pegomastix was making me molding like Jesus absolute Christ. I fed the god almighty Allah the taming helper and Kebo. Then I picked up my taming trap and I ran back home since I had no teleporter again. I went out looking for another aloe but I came across two resource gouches that I tamed instead. A bit later I flew over the bay where my starter base was and I saw this massive dung beetle. I proceeded to knock it out and tame it. Then I tamed another bulldog so that I could breed mine together to get an imprinted one. I ended day 9 by going to the island to kill some guards and grab some easy resources from the boxes. Also one of the ganchos I tamed produced both copper and adamantium ores which was just awesome. I started out this new day by getting myself a proper haircut to become myself. I then made a few of these healing darts which seems to be the only effective healing method from what I discovered. Then I went down to the ab area of Svartalfheim. The path was not safe so I had to slide my way down carefully. Since I was down here I just wanted to grab a few more narcotics since the mushrooms usually give you quite a lot. Then I found myself a crab in the water and it was all but a big mistake. The parasaur was useless in the water and I died to drowning like jeez. After I returned from the ab area I noticed a strange issue with my game. The world was constantly stuck in darkness and Gamma 4 didn't even help. I couldn't figure out what was wrong so I reconnected to the server which seems to fix it. Then the next day I went out looking for another alo and I came across a 580 female which I most definitely needed. I set up my trap and baited it over. No, wait. The aloe didn't fall for the trap and I had to pick it up and place down a temporary one which worked out. So I knocked her out, gave her a taming potion and some kibble and then tamed it. Now I could start working on getting this aloe spread for the delta tier boss. Back at base I proceeded making an espas hatchery and a poop terminal so I could get some fertilizer. 
I went out for a quick metal run and then when I was just about to teleport home an Anki didn't want me to leave, like bruh. Are you serious? Why did he come for me now? I wanted to attempt going down in the Magmasaur cave again and this time it actually worked. I managed to get down to the cave and grab some black pearls for a mining drill but sadly I didn't get any of the element shards. Time to die in the fire. I made myself the mining drill and I went out to farm a bit of metal. I saw another gacha and I wanted to attempt taming it, but I got Dude, screwed the, by oh a scorpion, like I'm how typical isn't that? I'm here trying to split stone, I'm getting attacked by- I'm here dropping stone for a gacha, while a saber tooth wanted a piece of my sweet- Oh no 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 no! No! I then found the male resource gacha I needed, so far I've only tamed females and I need a male so I can get some babies going. I threw out the gacha females along with the newly tamed male and I started breeding them. Before day 12 was over I had to tame a pair of trucks I could breed to kill Stupid. for hide and blood. Why is it attacking me? I started making some progress on a small greenhouse since I needed plenty of narco berries for darts and everything. Since I just built the greenhouse I had to go out and farm some more crystals. On this map, crystals drop rare geode you can open for more crystals or stone. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, when you open lots of these gacha crystals, it will give you random loot too, so you can basically grind it for more resources. I didn't really have too much to do than waiting for babies to raise up for boss fights, so I went out to the redwoods to look for some other tiered bees. I ran into Primant and I freaked out, but I got killed by a bird. Oh no 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 no! I found a bee in the distance so I went mountain climbing like crazy. It was an apex bee which has a really low spawn rate on this map and that's why we have the dino spawning rate turn up. Two of the aloes were done maturing but I couldn't make a saddle for it because we didn't have a single piece of hide. So I grabbed my bulb dog and I went over to the beach to kill some easy dodos yeah, or something. To... He stole my awesome teleporter! Get back here! Why does he steal my awesome teleporter? You're kidding me. No! Dude, I hate those pegamastics! Steal something else, not my, not my thingy. Now, since I got enough hide for the aloe saddle, that means I can come back to the beach and kill all these creatures. Then I went to take down a resource golem and when you use a chainsaw on him, you get more adamantium ore which you need for later tiers. And this is where you can get the crops on the map, if you didn't know. I then made myself some apex essence so I can make apex flowers to give it to the bee. I would rather have a beehive than a flying bee with 100 HP flying around. I tribed up with my friend Akisa again. She was gonna do some pretty builds for us this series, but that remains to be seen. I then found my nemesis who stole my teleporter and I was so happy to kill it. Oh hooray! Then I went over to the redwoods and I put down a tree platform so we could have some tree sap as well. On day 15 I just helped out Akisa by moving some of the structures because she wanted to build a bit. The next morning I went out to find some Y seeds so I could feed some traps to the gachas. I got the seeds so then I started working on a gacha greenhouse. The next day I started on building the boss arena. I built it on top of a floating island but I had to put gates around it to stop dinosaurs from flying off. I then proceeded making a second greenhouse for the supreme crops that I would eventually get from the bosses. Here's one thing to notice, when you kill a boss you get their seed that you can plant for a fruit that you need in one of the recipes to continue on the tiers. On this day I went and made a boss altar and alo saddle so I was basically preparing for the boss fights. I also then killed a bunch of trikes that we would need for its blood to make more health darts. I then picked up all of the backups we were gonna have in case things went sour on the boss fight. 
I also made a couple of Delta Shotgun bullets I was gonna need for the Summoner Resource Boss. Maybe not safe. On this new day, I started preparing for the Resource Boss, so basically, you will fight a Summoner from Gen 2, and he will spawn mobs you can kill for Crystal, Hide, and Blood. Also, killing the summoner rewards you with XP potions. What are you doing? Can I attack? Oh the God. way to do this boss fight is to use the Delta shotgun bullets. How's the shotgun yeah. going? It only needs one more shot and then it will be dead, so I guess we'll... Oh, or kill it now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just kill it, whatever. So it's day 21, it though? and it's time to fight the boss. And we have four more days go, to take down the boss. The this is gonna be our first kill, because the resource boss doesn't count. Ah, you made it up on the Rock of Victory. Are we sure we're we want to be this close to the boss? Yeah, we'll see. Oh my god, where's the boss? It's under the world. All I see is- Oh! I pressed the wrong key and dismounted! <laughs> no! Oh no! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> but you won the Rock of Victory! I pressed the wrong key, okay? You're not gonna be able to get back so quick! It's dying! Things are gonna start dying if you're not quick. No! Oh my god, I just kill him! Oh my god, right? Oh god, my, my, my owl is about to die. And the owl is aren't attacking him. I died again. This went horribly. I should have just let him kill it. Luckily, we had a lot of backups. True. So all I had to do was prepare them. How many backups do we have? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we have so many backups. Then it was time to try this out the second time. The Kisa teleported us in and the boss was ready for us. So to continue on the tears, we must take him down. This is the only way. And then we took down the baby tier boss of this mod. We got him! <laughs> Did you make it? Did you make it? <laughs> when you kill the boss, you will get its respective plantable seeds you can plant because it will be used for the next tier of kibble. Then it will also drop its skull, which you need for the next tier boss. I just ate! Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Then I prepared to make a few alpha narcotics and alpha darts, because we were gonna go out and look for an alpha creature eventually. If you were looking to making the new tiered armor, you have to go to the ocean and kill a specific creature for its alpha chitin. I wouldn't recommend making this armor, I would have just waited for apex. When you kill a normal resource gacha, there is a chance for you to spawn a boss gacha you have to kill to get the summoner for your own. It has 6 million HP and I had no chance of killing it so I just ran. Then the next day, I came across high level female oh, alpha oh, rex that I proceeded to tame. It took a while though. I baited the rex inside the cave and Akisa came over and blocked the gates. Good thinking since there was a prime gig outside. Is that the gig outside the gates? Good thing I brought metal gates. If you did like the video, please consider subscribing, it would help a lot. The next day, I spent a bit of searching for Rexes, and the only one I came across was a 240 male, which we needed so we could breed these Rexes for the next tier. A bit later, I wanted to see if I could get down the Magnusaur cave to grab some Magnusaur eggs, but that was being blocked by a death worm. 10 out of 10. There's a death worm here! <laughs> then I asked if Akiza wanted to come along with me. I died! Hold on a moment. How did you die? Oh, you ate I opened the crackers too quick and he fell over. Oh my god, there's two death worms in there. Two! Okay, yeah, maybe I need turbo speed. Maybe that's the key. Turbo speed! Oh. No! <laughs> Screwed up, Cave. I didn't need any magnus or eggs. So then I went around the redwoods for a bee, and I went AFK for a bit, and then suddenly I heard a bee attacking me. Oh, it spawned a giant wasp, boss! Oh my god! When you sometimes kill an ordinary bee, it will spawn a boss variant that you can kill for a summoner, which will give you your own that you can use to make boss on it. The next day I just prepared a few more rexes for the next tier of bosses. It was then time to try out alpha resource boss. So I took the rexes over, I put them all on aggressive, I then shotgun him and then killed him. 
So I was quite curious if we could take down the boss now, since the Rexes did so good on a resource boss. 50 million HP, I hope it's enough. Oh, but the damage wasn't enough. Man, the, the, man is getting fast, the Rexes man. only damaged him to half HP, yeah. it wasn't enough, and I needed more Rexes. And better also. So the next day, I started preparing with a few more Rexes and level them up and heal them. So this second try I'm gonna do the boss, I want to have a backup of Rexes to send in, in case things go sour. It was finally time to take down the alpha boss fight properly this time. So the plan was to send in two waves of dinos. The first wave is gonna take him down very low and the second wave is gonna finish him. I was using a Kisa's Delta skull for this, so this is the only chance for us to take down the boss. And then we finally took him down. So the Apex Seeds I got from the boss, I planted them and then I just had to wait so I could make the kibble. So in order for me to tame the Apex creatures, I will have to work on getting Apex Bone Meal. The Bone Meal can only be made from the skeleton creatures, as I explained from before. But first of all, we have to farm the stuff for an Apex Chainsaw in order to chainsaw those skeleton dinos. The mats for the chainsaw can only be harvested from a bionic dino. Woogly, I got a handy to you, man. What have you done with these gas bags? They're more like thick bags. I then finally found the skeleton dino. I brought the boys out and then we killed it. I chainsawed it for some bones and then back at base, I made the bone meal. So the next day, I waited for some apex fruits to become ripe and then I basically went off looking for a high level apex tame. I found a max level Apex Rex and I proceeded tranking it. It was very annoying since I had to go back to base to grab a few gates to trap it in, along with the Fire Rex. And yeah, well, eventually she went down, so I fed her and then tamed her. Well, since I had a female Apex Rex, I needed a male, so I went out looking for one. I did find it in one of the spots where I saw a normal Rex once, and it was a male, so I put up my traps. I put my dino behind it to bait it in, and then I knocked it out and tamed it. I let the Rexes smash since I was now working towards the Apex boss. I had only 40 more days until day 50 so I had to rush everything by now. So it's a new day and I had gathered all of the remaining resources for a Supreme Smelter. Oh boy, it's a really good looking forge, but I do wish it used some kind of different fuel than fire essence. Then I went out for one of these elite resource columns. They're a bit tougher than the normal ones, but they do give you most of the ores you cannot obtain. Well, I didn't think of this clearly and there was a minion still alive. I got back to the golem and there was no minions around. Then I went for a second golem also. Oh, I knew it. Oh my god. So back at base, after farming all of those resource golems, I made myself a new pump shotty, an apex one with apex bullets, since I would need them for the apex resource boss later. And then I took my boys out to kill this skeleton element giga, and no, it does not drop any element but it will give me elemental bones that I need to make the bone meal so I can tame elementals later. Since I finally had enough Rexes ready, I went over to the boss arena just to repair it a bit because it was damaged. And then I summoned the Apex resource boss because he will unlock most of the tech grams and give me 100 element when I kill him. It took me a whole day just to kill the summoner and get the element. I needed to do this a few more times because 100 element is not enough for a generator and a transmitter. I went back to base and then I made my first replicator. And after that I went back to the boss arena to fight the apex resource boss a second time for the element. Oh now it drops shit. Take notice, yep. you will not get the element if you finish it off with the weapon. It has to be killed from your That's dino. That's the only way to get element unfortunately. For demonstration purpose only, I show that you cannot get any element if you kill him with the shotgun. I had to kill him 4 times for some element, and that should be enough. I had farmed enough apex crystal hide and blood for the entire tier. 
Then back at base, I placed down the replicator and started making the other necessary tech items. Like a tech generator, mutator and of course the one and only transmitter, so we can scan for diamonds. There is a specific reason why I prefer S Plus over SS these days, and this is the reason. So what's so fascinating about the transfer control unit is that it works like a transfer tool, but it's a stationary one. You can basically link it up with the tech sensor, so it will trigger every time you run next to the sensor. So now I will no longer have to manage the collectors. The TCU and the sensor needs to have the same pin, otherwise this won't work. So every time you're gonna walk next to the sensor, it's gonna dump everything from the collector to the cracker. I spent the next following day killing a bunch of gachas to get the boss gacha to spawn. The percentage is extremely low, but the boss gacha has a chance to produce resources that is hard to obtain like vibranium and herbs. Then I found the twins of gachas and this time it finally happened. It spawned a boss gacha oh. and I killed it. I was so happy, you have no idea how long I spent doing this for. And with the power of editing, it only happened in seconds. I then looked at my scanner and I saw one of these frost honeybees and I went over there. Sadly, I got killed along with the bee by a bloodstalker. Like seriously, are you kidding me? Okay. It was now time to try defeating the apex boss since I only had 5 more days left to defeat it or I will fail this whole 100 day challenge. I had set up both of the rexes in hope it was gonna be enough. It spawned an apex rhino and boy did he do massive damage, like Jesus. I sent in my first wave of dinos and they were munching on him like never before. The Rexes started dying so I had to whistle on the second group to attack the Rhino, but I was completely stuck on the Rhino's horn. Giggity. Mm -hmm. Then I managed to get off my Dino and I started healing my Rexes with the healing darts out of desperation. And then we killed it and I unlocked the next tier of engrams. This tactic worked out great and the Rexes killed the boss and rewarded me with Apex Skull and seeds I could plant. Then back at base, I replaced the old crop lots with these S plus tech crop lots so I could get the fruits faster. Then I planted the new seeds and I replaced a bunch of other crop lots too. Then I made the beehives I was hoarding and I placed them down. I was still missing one important honeybee and that was the prime one since I was on that current tier. So I had to go out and I found one on the scanner, I killed it. What? I made the beehive and then I placed it down. The next day I went out to kill a lot of primes to chainsaw them for their blood so I could make some ingots and kibble. In the middle of everything when I was killing an invisible basilisk and then chainsawing it, I was murdered by raptors. No! Then back at base, I made a bunch of prime narcotic and then darts because it was time for me to go out and look for a prime giga. It took me a while to find a decent level giga, but I found a 560 male and it was really tricky getting it inside the gates and I really didn't realize the bear trap trick didn't work on him. Bruh. Oh, this giga, come on. I died a few times because of this, but after many many attempts, I did trap him and then knock him out. Back at base, I slowly made the new prime armor pieces since they were kinda expensive and required at least 100 prime ingots per piece. The next day I found a max level female prime giga on the scanner and I went over to it. I went back to base to grab a few gates to try trapping her in the corner. But then we both fell down the mountain and I died from a levitating giga. <laughs> oh my god. I saw that the giga was close to the cave where I tamed the rex from before. So I tried baiting it in there so I could trap it in. 
I thought I was clever and that the Giga wouldn't be able to eat my face if I were slightly above her head, but no, that was the stupidest choice ever. Okay, there goes that plan. Oh, he could reach me, okay. It took literally forever to trank this beast out, but she went out cold finally. I named the Giga Steph after a friend. So I wanted to make the rest of the prime armor, but that was lacking on hide and blood. So I made a bunch of prime shotgun ammo instead, so I could go do the summoner boss for some blood and hide. I went and did the apex summoner a couple of times because I wanted the element to make an S plus propagator, so I didn't have to be in render distance of the dinos so they could breed whenever I'm away from the base. Then back at base, I made the remaining electronics I needed for the propagator, and then afterwards I placed it down. So there was a new day, so I made myself a new S plus transfer control unit, so whenever I walked in the center of the base, it would feed all of the gachas. It was time to upgrade another greenhouse a bit, since the original wasn't enough for the gachas. So the next day, I threw out a few more breeders and sacrifices I was gonna need because I honestly didn't realize the saddles for the gigas were that expensive. I then decided to try out the prime resource boss with just 2 gigas. It was a bit of a shocker really, and I should have probably used more than just 2 gigas. I eventually killed it, and I decided not to do it again since it didn't really unlock or give you anything special except XP potions. So the next few days I was basically just killing elite resource columns and letting more giga babies to race up. It was day 59 and I had gigas fully raced up so I put them in a terminal to prepare for the boss fights. Akisias told me she killed one of the bees and a giant bee boss spawned in, so I went over there to kill it for its summoner. The giant wasp can produce all of the boss honey that you need for each boss tier. This was the only beehive I had left to obtain. Oh my god! You can't even grapple hook to it. Then apparently Akisa accidentally spawned the first boss tier in the base and she lost her wasp Akisa. Might have summoned the boss here, my bad. Okay, we killed him, we killed him, we didn't lose anything. You lost one wasp! Not wasp Kisa! I guess that's karma. I started killing a bunch of gigas since I would need them in order to make the saddles. They were an important sacrifice for a probable cause. Then I gave a few more gigas the saddles they needed and then I placed them inside a terminal to get some passive XP and healing. I started the next night by leveling a few gigas and healing them up, basically preparing them for the prime boss fight. I waited it long enough. Not enough resources to pull. Like what? what? What's going on? Who's crafting something? I cannot pull anything. I'm not crafting anything. It was some kind of weird bug like, that was what? happening. I didn't What's understand it, but we did have the stuff for it. I have to pull the blood myself. Oh, we have 50. Okay, I'll meet you down there, Kisa. And then, the day had finally come to take down the prime boss. So I placed out the first and the second wave of the gigas in preparation. Then I went over to the boss altar and summoned the prime boss. Here we go! Oh, perfect. Apparently it was oh a blue God, death worm, so and I was kinda scared of him because I've already died oh a couple God. of times to them. Okay, I'm gonna send the rest in. Yep, send the rest in. We're going. I don't think it's enough. Okay, you stay here, I'm gonna go grab more extras. Yeah. It's 30 million. I did. Oh, we did it. No, I didn't unlock anything. Oh, no. I was too far away. Oh. So I picked up the saddles and started to throw out all the Vigigas we had saved up. I got killed by a basilisk in the process. What? There's a basilisk here? Oh, it's gonna kill everything. Oh, it's already killing everything. The next day. We had three waves of gigas and I was pretty sure we would kill it with this. I had three waves of gigas and one dream and it was to kill this boss and unlock the next tier which was elemental. The elemental tier consists of fire, electric and frost. 
The boss drops the skull that you need for all of the three elements here, so basically you will have to fight him three times. We already fought him twice, so we're just gonna have to fight him one more time. Duh. I know, I'm standing here. I don't think we need that wave. Feels good, man. Oh. Since I unlocked the new engrams for the next tier, I started making some fire narcotics so I can make the darts. Because other darts don't work on different creatures, like I explained. We were gonna start on taming some fire creatures, because I really wanted that spino because of the water buff. I had to wait a whole new day, but then I could make the 20 cable I needed since a max level in my server only requires 10. Then we went out looking for a fire spino. I kissed a spotted one by a leg, so I tried baiting it inside a cave where I tamed the other ones. Treat for you here. Oh no 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 no! He's gonna kill me! <laughs> I died a few times trying to knock this out, but then I put the gates down. But I did not realize the spino could walk over the normal gates. What? Did it walk out? So I had to go back to the base and grab some behemoth gates. When I teleported back to the spino, there was a skeletal elemental giga attacking it, so I had to kill it very quickly. I placed out Lady Broccoli as a bait so the spino could go attack it while I was putting down the gates. It did take a while to knock it out, but then finally it went out and I could feed and tame it. Then I would only need a male for it, so I could start breeding them for the elemental boss fights. I wanted to get myself a frost mayring so we could have some sort of transportation, since you could get a fire rock drake or a mayring at this stage. I made a bunch of frost starts so I could knock it out, then I made a few billboards to trap it in since the billboard works super good and they cost hardly anything. I then spotted the mayring, I trapped it in and then I started knocking it out so I could tame it. Then I went over to the redwoods to grab a second one, and I did the same to that one. Akisa had found herself a fire rock drake she wanted. She trapped it in with gates, but we had difficulties taming it. I gave up after dying a few times, so I went out looking for another fire spino. I found another fire spino, then I started putting down the gates only to track it out straight after that, and then tame it. Since the Spinos were breeding at this time, me and Akisa wanted to see if we could take out the Nightmare Shadow Mane. It took a while to kill it because of its natural armor, but he stood no chance against the Gigas. Once you kill the Nightmares, it will drop its blood, but we never got the chance to try it out, sadly. The next day, I got myself a new imprinted Maywing and I named him Danny Boy after a good pal. So on this day, I went out looking for Yudis that could prove useful in the upcoming boss fights we were planning on doing. I found one, so I put traps all around it and then knocked it out. There was a second Yudi up near one of the obelisks, so I put down a trap just for it and I knocked it out and then tamed it. So here's the whole reason why I went with fire spinos. The water buff is a deal breaker for the spinos, especially since they get 100k more damage. Okay, never mind, it does actually get some kind of damage difference. So with the hydration buff, it gets 848 damage, right? Without it, it does 738. Then we went out to try to kill one of these godly rock drakes because the Kisa wanted one. Kind of hard targeting a boss. Okay, well they're targeting in the B now. When you kill one of these godly oh, creatures, it. it will drop its godly soul that you can use on your elemental to upgrade it to an advanced elemental. And then I went out to tame one of these fire iguanodons to see how good they were. Apparently it can glitch out of the gates, so I knocked it out and tamed her. I named it Wolfie after a good friend. Then back at base, we were gonna upgrade one of these fire rock tricks into an advanced one. Talk about the big boost, hoo ya! Health pool and damage went up by a lot as you can see. These godly creatures need a new saddle that you can make in the supreme smithy. Since Akisa got her godly swooper, I wanted to get myself a godly maywing, so me and Akisa went out to kill one so I could upgrade my Danny boy to a godly. Oh my god. 
then me and Akisa were gonna go attempt to take one of these godly shadow mains out. Since there were no tameable shadow mains as far as I've seen, so we wanted to figure out what kind of creature you need in order to get yourself a godly shadow main. Oh, okay. All said you need an electric ravager to upgrade it. Then we found an electric ravager, a high level one, so I let the Kisa put down the billboards this time to trap it. Then we just knocked it out and then tamed it. Back at base. We were then ready to get our first godly shadow main. So I pulled all of the resources required for it. It required blood from all of the creatures including the soul and elemental bones. And then we had our first godly shadow main. I named him Sir Pounds. Sir Pounds were gonna be a very important asset in the series until endgame. Then I went out to try out this godly beast and boy was Sir Pounds an absolute alpha of a beast. I tried out the super attack and apparently it did just amazing damage. Hmm. 10 million! Broken. 145! And then, Akisa told me she found a new cave she wanted to explore, but she haven't learned from all of those other tries we've done. They are infested with dangerous death worms that are annoyingly strong. Is there creatures over here? Uh, not that I've seen so far. What is that? Ouch. Oh my god. I knew it. We shouldn't have gone in there. It was now day 77 and it was time for us to do the first elemental electric boss. So I summoned the boss yep. in. It was an electric spooder and the spooder did an extreme amount of damage and weirdly enough, Ikiza got her godly rock tree killed. Somehow. Oh. What? Did you check your health? Then the spiner started dying and we were only down to two left. We have like two spinal left. I went back to base to grab a bunch of gigas out of desperation for them just to be slaughtered. It doesn't have much HP, so let's go! Oh my god! No, it died so quick, they didn't even get the bite in. Oh, seriously. Yes. <laughs> then we just focus mainly on healing these two spinos. Two million. And I know, I'm what do you know? But they actually made it. They killed it on their own. Ooh, I got the godly golem summon elixir. When consumed, we'll spawn a tame godly golem for you. When you kill one of these elemental bosses, yeah. it will right. reward you with a godly golem it? summoner. And inside its inventory, you can craft the vampiric ore for 3 metal that you can then melt down into ingots to make the vampiric set. So it's been a few days now because we basically just waited for the spiners to get ready and grow up. So now it's day 80 and we were ready for the fire boss. Nice. Isn't that- Why am I picking up your sh**? That's a really great question, why would you do that? Cause I'm trying to access the vault! And you keep throwing in front of the vault. Then we summoned the boss and waited. It was a fire bug and he did so much damage. There were probably a better way of doing these bosses, but I thought it was like Pokemon where fire is good for almost everything. And then we killed the boss, but I didn't notice anything. There was no message or anything, but I got the fire boss skull and the summoner, so we killed it. I don't know. What happened to it? They killed it. We one of us need to get it, so. If you didn't get it, then I guess that's fine. I got the godly golem summon elixir. Then we figured out we had to do some of the bosses again because we didn't have the prime skull for the third elemental boss, which was frost. And then, I summoned in the frost boss. It was a frosty scorpion, and if you played Pokemon, everyone knows that fire will always beat frost. <laughs> Yokes aside, I have no clue if that's true or not in this mod, but we used the fire spinos on everything. 
Luckily, the scorpion boss was focused on only one spino, so we only had to focus on healing <laughs> that one. What am I? What am I stepping on? I cannot see. The duck. You're stepping on the duck. That's me. And then it went down, and I got another summoner plus the skull. Awesome. Day eighty-one. Akisa slightly mentioned she wanted help Where getting an electric ravager. To pick up my ravager. I followed her with the teleport, only to get devoured by a lion. <sighs> oh no! Akisa was not safe. Couldn't you clear? No, it wasn't. So the time had finally come for us to take down the last elemental boss. So I threw out all of the dinos that we were going to use for this fight. Oh, it's good, it's good. I also tamed a very cute frosty goat that was jumping here and there. No. I accidentally forgot about the shine horn no, and just it just ran in and died. Well, my head died so... We literally melted the broodmother and she felt way more easier than the previous three elemental bosses. Then, I wanted to attempt doing Lady of the Beach despite me having a few more days to get my first oh world boss kill. She hit like a truck, no joke at all. Literally destroyed those fire spinos. We could not keep them up with the healing darts. So, we were gonna go take one of these vampiric creatures out, which was a thorny dragon. And once you kill it, it will drop a thorny soul that you can use on a fire moshops to soul. transform it into a vampiric thorny. Elemental moshop. I went AFK for a bit, and Akiza told me she had found the fire moshops and she trapped it in. So all I had to do was just go over there and feed and tame it. It literally took two days just to tame this. So I wanted to evolve that fire moshops, but we were lacking on electric blood, so I had to go out and farm some. What's that? And then back at base, it was finally time to transform the Mo shops into a vampiric there thorny we go. dragon. Look at that, a thorny dragon. Beautiful. I killed a few gigas to level it up, and then I went out and tried its awesome power. Well, yeah, that was a joke. The damage was a real disappointment compared to the godly creatures. Then me and Akiza had decided to take on Lady of the Beach with our shadow mains. They did so much damage to the boss and it was great. And when you kill one of these bosses they will drop a token that you need in order to get your own tame or use the token to summon the endgame boss. Currently for what I've been informed the tameable version of the world bosses were bugged or something. So we didn't bother getting one. Then we went to the Genesis biome to take on Lord of the Swamp, which was a big frog. The frog does a lot of torpor with its tongue, but it stood no chance against the mate boosted pair of godly shadow mains. I had a great idea what to do with the vampiric since it has some sort of self healing. We were gonna use it as a tank, so we put exactly 99 points into HP. Then we name it Tank and Spank. Then it was also time to take out the third world boss, which was a giant frost duty. It didn't seem to do too much damage, but his roar feared us multiple times and that was kinda annoying. Akisa's shadow main was very close of dying and I couldn't heal it. But luckily Akisa came back and soulballed her shadow main and I finished off the Lord of the Snow. Then it was time to make myself the godly armor set, which I think was the best in the entire mod. Wibbly, is it possible you can add some insulation to the armors, because the godly one doesn't have any insulation at all. It was now day 90, and it was time to take out the fourth last what world boss, a big giant yeah, thorny dragon. Did we get the token? Yeah, I got the token. Yeah, I got this. Oh, nice. Okay, we can go back. Then the next day, I took a kiss of shadow main out so I could get some mate boost while I was taking out these godly shadow mains. I also took out two of these nuclear magnosaurs 
and when you kill them you get a token to make your own nuclear magma sore. I went out to look for an electric ravager I found on a scanner, but when I went to the okay. area I got killed by an invisible basilisk. Then I got back to the Maywing and I got dismounted by a Micro Raptor and there was an Allosaurus nearby and he just shot at me. Micro Raptors! Oh. I went fooling I around this. with the Bulldog while oh, Akiza was pocket. killing a Should godly Shadow May. <gasps> only to be chased by an ant. Oh no! Help, 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 help! Oh my god. So the next day, me and Akiza went out to look for electric ravagers. Akiza trapped one in, we knocked it out and tamed it. And not too far away, there was another ravager, so we tamed it also. Akiza then prepared a lot of ravagers for us that we were gonna transform into shadow mains eventually. Then we had to kill a few of them, sadly, because we needed the electric blood so we could make the shadow mains. It was day 95, Akisa had prepared a lot of godly shadow mains for the final fight, so all that was left was just to level them up and heal them. On day 96, we placed out all of the dinos and waited for day 99. I chose not to wait for day 100 in case we would fail and had to get more shadow mains. And then, the final moment had come. It was time to summon Wukong the Destroyer. And weirdly enough, there was no summoning circle. But I heard the mod still needs a bit of polishing, but it does work quite well. I summoned the boss and the sound was so goddamn loud that I couldn't communicate with the keys at all. The boss did a lot of damage, so we just focused on healing the shadow mains and tank and spam. That is very oh my loud. God. Oh my god, my ears. Hey, look at Tank, tank is back. He's doing well. The Yudi's not doing well. But then, we finally did it. We beat the whole Supreme mod. We finished it one day earlier than expected, but for a good reason though. I do think the boss isn't quite hard enough, but I heard that it will be reworked sometime this year. And that's all my friends, I do hope you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and subscribing. Peace!